Hello there. My name is Rolly, and I have a ham radio uh, call sign of Z01BQD. Welcome. So you've watched some of my other videos on one man the expeditions to the Pacific. And so far I've not talked about rigs, antennas and other equipment. Why not? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee. Come on, let's talk about radio, shall we? In my previous videos on one man de-expeditioning, we discussed the license and requirements to operate ham radio in my first video, and how to go about getting that license in my second video, and then some of the logistics involved in my third video. In this video, let's talk about radio, shall we? Now, I'm not brave enough to tell you which radio you should be using on a one-man de-expedition. <laughs> in fact, I don't think there is a right or a wrong answer to that question. Which radio is best? There are, however, some wise choices you can make. And these are what I want to discuss with you. Just for the record though, I use an Alleycraft KX3 with a small HLA150 amplifier into a combination of dipoles up the coconut trees and uh, you do use a DX Commander Expedition model, uh, one of those all-band verticals. But let's uh, talk about the very real considerations for a one-man de-expedition. Perhaps the most important consideration is the total weight of all your equipment. Now, because I've done a lot of travelling uh, with our national carrier in New Zealand, I'm now able to take up to two pieces of luggage, each of uh, 23 kg, uh, as well as a carry-on bag. Now, that sounds <laughs> really good until I get to the country that I'm visiting in the Pacific. Unfortunately, even with all the air points and travel status, they normally will uh, allow only one piece of luggage weighing no more than 17 kg. And from there on in, I have to pay excess luggage at very expensive rates. So weight is a real consideration. It means I have to take uh, some wise choices as to the equipment I choose to take with me. Mains power in many of these islands is not at all reliable. With this in mind, I always take a small battery with me to act as a buffer uh, for the variable mains to take out the variations we get in the mains. So I run all of my radio equipment from battery, but have the battery on a, a continual charge from the mains. Often in Papua New Guinea, for example, there are total blackouts which last for anything from three to four hours. <laughs> yeah, that's on a good day. The bigger problems are brownout situations, where the 230 volt mains can sag to as little as 80 or 100 volts. Now, that is when um, running from the battery comes, in, comes to the rescue. Now you'll need to check with your airline as to their requirements for carrying batteries. Some will allow up to certain ampere hour batteries in their checked luggage, some don't. Some will allow you to take batteries uh, in your carry-on, uh, some don't. <laughs> what I do now, I generally buy a battery when I get to my destination. And then I leave it with my host as a small gift uh, simply for putting up with me. <laughs> a computer of some sort is pretty much standard equipment for ham radio nowadays. Uh, for the sake of weight and compactness, I normally take a tablet uh, type of uh, computer with me. Now I use that for digital modes such as FT8 and RTTY, as well as uh, for logging. It'll certainly help if your computer has a good battery capacity. Uh, I've already talked about poor mains conditions, uh, so running a computer on its own battery power is pretty much essential. All of the equipment we have spoken about so far, I can get in, uh, into a nicely padded backpack. 
And I would certainly advise you to consider doing the same so that you can take your equipment onto the aircraft with you and put it into the overhead lockers. If you do put your equipment into the check luggage, then please make sure that it is well packed so that it doesn't get damaged. You will certainly stand a high chance of getting damaged if you don't use, uh, say, a solid suitcase. Your luggage will not be treated carefully <laughs> through most of the islands. No, that's for sure. Now, <laughs> if you've been inspired enough to give it a go, then please make sure you either take a video camera with you or make sure your mobile phone can take some good videos. Record a couple of your sessions and, uh, and a few shots of your station. And then consider posting it uh, onto YouTube for others to enjoy as well. Similar to what I'm doing here. Now here's a tip for your mobile phone. Whenever you visit one of the islands, I normally purchase one of the local SIM cards and then pay as you go. Otherwise, international roaming in any of the Pacific Islands is extremely expensive. And you'll get a very nasty surprise when you get home and uh, see your first bill when it comes in. Okay, to finish off uh, this video, I suggest you talk to one of your local uh, POTA or SOTA guys, uh, the Parks on the Air or Summits on the Air guys, about the equipment that they take with them. All the major manufacturers have suitable equipment for this sort of operation, and in the main it is uh, very suitable for one-man day expeditions as well. And I'm sure you'll be happy with something from you know, Alicraft, or ICOM, Kenwood or Yesu, but talk to someone that you know and trust, bearing in mind the things that we have discussed in this video. Mainly the weight and the bulk of what you're uh, actually buying. Now in my next video on one man de expeditioning, I'll be talking about antennas and uh, what I usually take with me when I'm away. In the meantime, please click on the subscribe button below and ring that little bell. That way you'll be first to be notified when my next video is in this series is released. Until then, Bye for now.